couple new things to talk about. Well, not entirely new. These are part of the same Jabe Davenport collection at Michael's that the mermaid markers came from. And as I've said on my channel, those mermaid markers are legit and I really like them, especially using the coupon. I really liked the water brush, which I've already worn the side off of because I've been using the shit out of it. So I should tell you something. So I thought I would pick up a couple more things and take a look at them. Now this particular situation here is the Jane Davenport. She had two little watercolor travel sets. There was a Brights collection and a Neutrals collection and the Brights was what I wanted. Like the Neutrals skin tones or maybe like just like browns and shit, like whatever, not really what I really love, but I love the Brights collection or at least I thought I would. So I have been waiting for it to come back into stock at A. Michael's around me. Finally showed up, I used a coupon, tested it out and really liked it. So I'm gonna show that one today. But I liked it so much, this little compact set, they're really pigmented and I really liked it, that I thought, what the hell? Why don't I just pick up the neutrals as well? Because that way I have a couple of little tiny guys. Most of my watercolors are in big fucking giantness and my only real transportable watercolors are like the little tiny ones that cost a dollar at Target. And I thought, well, these are kind of nice, so I'm gonna try I liked these ones so much, if I pick up the neutral, then I will have two little palettes and I can do a lot of fun with my handy water brush on the go. These are $29.99. Now I used a coupon on each of these. It took 12 bucks off. Like I bought them at separate times. I used 40% off coupon. I suggest that same with the mermaid markers, which are like 40 bucks, but use a coupon gets a little bit more reasonable for the cheapies out there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through both sets of, we'll start with the watercolors. I'm gonna go through both sets of these, but as you can see, I've already opened the brights and messed with it. So I'm gonna open the neutrals because I'm assuming, I could be wrong, I'll let you know if I notice anything different, but I'm assuming that it's the same, like the same, the opening of this is the same as this, it's just different colors. So you'll see kind of what I saw when I opened this. We have the two palettes, the teal colored, like the turquoise colored for the brights and the gold for the neutrals. We've got this little, like, I'm assuming, oh, you can just hold this in your hand while you're painting, I guess, which I never do, so that didn't even occur to me. Pardon me, I was like, what the hell is this? Like a stand, because it's not working. So when you open this up, this little puffy up, you've got pans here for mixing, pans here for mixing. They're metal, and then it comes with a little paper that has like a color chart on it for you to remember the names of your colors and what they are, and then a little note talking about it. It has three primary colors, and then the rest are neutral colors. The Brights palette also came with three primaries to mix colors, so that you have a mixing capability of primaries plus the Brights. And I'm curious, because the names are different and the packaging looks slightly different on the Brights versus the neutrals primaries. Like the brights are called Buzzy Ladybug and Butterfly and the neutrals are called Mango, Apple and Blueberry and I have no idea if they are comparable. We'll see when we test them out. So then your colors come with these little, little faces and whatnot on them. So there's this thing that comes out that holds the colors in it, right? And then you have the little pans, like individual pans and they're all individually wrapped. So this was the most obnoxious part about getting this whole thing set up was peeling all of like the plastic and shit off of the colors while still making sure that they're in the right order. So when I use the color chart, I know which color is which. And then the color itself is a concentrated pan color and it comes in a little plastic tub. So I'm gonna take a second here. I'm gonna unbox all, like unwrap all of these puppies and get them ready for testing. You don't need to see this whole thing. I'm probably not even gonna cuss that much when I do it. I thought you might want to see the carnage, the leftovers of cleaning this whole situation up. Okay. So here are the colors in the pan and you can see them here. So I am gonna go and I'm going to create my color chart in my little dilutions journal that I like to use. See, I have one, a previous color chart for the neutral palette or for the brights palette. So I'm gonna create my color chart for the, the neutral palette and I'm just gonna paint on the little paint tester in the same, same situation. So let me label this up really quick. Notice I don't, I'm not super clean about it. Now I've got my water brush here and I've got just a piece of paper towel to wipe it off on. So I'm just gonna awaken the color up on the pan. I'm gonna touch it down on the little color chart and then I will also make it on here so that like you can see with what I did here with the brights where I kind of let it go from concentrated down to non-concentrated so you can kind of see the spectrum of what's available. Okay. 
The one thing I will say for these is that they are super, super pigmented. Like that was barely any water and I was able to pick up a decent amount of pigment. So this is mango. So as you see, the water brush is just working it down in terms of saturation. You see how it just kind of goes from bright to, to less bright. <laughs> Now I'm gonna take a second here and just kind of compare the two, the two uh, primary colors. Notice that these ones are a little bit more bright, and these ones are a little bit like less. Like they're they're both vibrant because they're pigmented, but these seem to be more traditional red, orange, and yellow, and these seem to be a little bit more like along the lines of the bright palette. So that's nice because I was kind of like, fuck, am I gonna have two sets of primary colors? Because I'm not sure how I feel about that, but. Seems to be working out okay. I will say one of the things about this palette that I was interested in is that it comes with the gray, the white, and the black. Now, some of you who work with watercolor know that white watercolor really isn't, generally speaking, a thing. Your white should be the white of the paper. And if it's white, it's more like a gouache rather than watercolor. Like, so you can't really even see it. Like, you can kind of see it, like it's wet. But there's like, I can see like a subtle difference. I don't know if you can on camera. There is a bit of pigment there. I just have no idea how it's gonna translate on regular paper, like I'm painting it on, and I can see a slight difference, but not enough to really, I'm curious. I've got my little black moleskin. I'm just gonna tap this on just to see how much pigment. So there's some pigment on there. Okay, I'm not gonna leave that on there though. Nope. Then we got the black, AKA Raven. Ooh, this vitamin C orange is beautiful. I love the pigmentation in these colors. They are so pretty. Wait till I swatch out the, I've shown you what I did. I've shown you what I did in the, uh, the Brights palette. The sand is not as pigmented as the others, but I don't think it's supposed to be. I show you what I did in my book in the Brights palette, but I'm gonna swatch them again so you can just see how pigmented these colors are because they are, they are absolutely lovely. Buff. I do love how soft these are. As much as I can see them for like a, like different like kinds of skin tones, like I can also see these for doing like beach scenes, which would be a lot of fun. So this is the neutral palette, and I will not lie, I like the brights better because they're just my kinds of colors, but these are just as beautifully pigmented. I feel like having this neutral palette along with the brights palette is actually going to be very handy in having a more well-rounded bit to carry around while still not taking up too much space. Like you can see here, I was experimenting with the brights yesterday and like mixing them. So you can kind of see what's going on with the brights palette, but I'm gonna take a second here and I'm just gonna swatch these right quick. And I'm also going to directly compare the primary colors in both palettes together. But first I'm just gonna, I'm leaving this I'm going to, I will write down what each, I will put a little title up so you can see what color is what as I'm working, okay? Just to make it so I don't have to write them all down again. Taking a second just to say, look at these three colors and how beautiful they are. Tell me that those are not absolutely fucking stunning. Just saying. Okay, so these are the, the 12 colors from this palette. Now I'm gonna quickly swatch the, the primary colors that on each palette next to each other. So you can kind of see that there are really no, like this is nice, like they're similar, but they are different. And they're different enough to justify, I think, having the three primaries in each palette because they kind of seem more geared towards each individual set of colors rather than just being true primary colors. Though I will argue that the neutrals palette primary colors are much closer to true primary colors than the others. Since this is still wet, I'm gonna pull a little bit of blue from the brights palette just to blend this into the blue from the neutrals palette. Cause look how pretty these blend together, you guys. Like just look how nice, I'm gonna grab some purple from the Brights palette and just blend these out. 
and just look how pretty they are together. And then we'll grab some little pink here, blend that in. And then I'm gonna pull some gray, I think. Let's pull some gray and blend the gray into it. Look how nice these are though. These blend really light, like beautifully with each other and they're pigmented and they work with just a tiny bit of water. And I will say that most of this was done with a regular paintbrush, not a water brush. So they work really well both ways with the water brush and without the water brush. So I am giving a hearty thumbs up to both of my, of these Jane Davenport watercolor palettes. I think that one, if you're gonna pick one, look at the colors that I've swatched and decide which one you think you'll get the most use out of because they are 30 bucks each. If you want both, buy them on different trips so you can use a coupon on each of them. You know, that's just various ideas on how to get yourself some of these without, um, without spending too much money on them if you want both.